Up until now, we talked about end uh, manipulators, uh, end effectors, or a gripper. But the general terms of these end part is what he called end of arm tooling, EOAT. And there is a long list of EOATs. We'll call them grippers just for the sake of the name. But they are vacuum grippers, pneumatic grippers, hydraulic grippers, long list of grippers. We're actually going to go through every single one of them to understand how it works and the relevant applications for the grippers themselves. But we can see how long is the list, and there is even there is, the list even is longer, but they are the most common ones. And here's a set of grippers. First of all, general pictures so we can feel when we understand what is a gripper. On the top left picture, we see a vacuum gripper. It has a vacuum cups and a vacuum pump on the back. And these vacuum pumps can lift heavy things. And as long as the pump creating the vacuum or keeping a vacuum condition, that particular load will be attached to the vacuum caps and the robot can do a pick and place operation. Pick them and place them in point two. We have a hydraulic gripper where hydraulically, by having a tremendous oil pressure, the grippers actually closing on the load, closing on the body to be moved, and as long as there is an oil pressure, these grips will be, clo will be closed. So, going to pick, closing, going to place, placing. Pneumatic gripper, same principle, but with air pressure. Much lower level, smaller robots. But the pneumatic grippers is by having air pressure. As long as air being pressed to a piston, then the grips is being pulled. If the mechanism is positive mechanism, if the mechanism is negative, having a air, compressed air, pressed air um, going in, closing it. Positive mechanism will open it. Closing a negative mechanism will close it. Then we have a servo-electric gripper having uh, on each different uh, part of the gripper wires and these wires are being pulled as a motor rotates so it is an analog process. The more the motor turns, the closer the gripper is as opposed to pneumatic hydraulics and vacuum, which is a binary type of operation, a digital operation, a yes and no, one and zero. Either it's closed or it's open, pneumatic, hydraulic and vacuum. But the servo is analog, analog type of gripping. So we can grip softer things and we can grip bodies in a certain pressure not to damage them. We have uh, three pictures on the right hand side to demonstrate to us the actual applications of it. The picture on the top right is basically a vacuum cleaner using a, a, a soft material, a kind of a sponge. We'll talk about it in a minute. To lift uneven shaped body. We have uh, the picture on the right <clears throat> is a picture that has a pneumatic um, uh, gripper that these two hands Closing using pneumatic one and we can see the, the pipe that goes in the the picture on the bottom right is uh, hydraulic uh, grippers having springs in order to hold it and release it and give it some kind of, of Relief some kind of a stress relief to the body to the object that we lift in because this is a heavy um, uh, object high weight We don't want to damage that so we grip it using hydraulic high pressure oil, having springs to relieve the strain and the stress and move it from the peak point to the place point. And the most, the, the simplest gripper that exists calls two pincher gripper. 
In the picture on the right, we see an example, an actual practical example, but let's look at uh, the structure of it. It has a cord on the left hand side, and when we pull the cord, then the two clouds get closer together and we can hold this particular object. When we release the cord, the two springs pull the two clouds apart. There is a frame, there is a hinges, so opening uh, um, pulling and, and uh, pulling and releasing the cord will open and close the uh, clouds the opening of the cord can be either di di digitally controlled meaning open or release or can be analog type of operation using a motor as the motor rotates, the cord being pulled. The cord being pulled, the clothes get closer. There's another uh, mechanism for the gripper, which is um, a purely mechanical one, called the wrecking pinion. An actual that goes in and out, it's basically a wheel, a straight wheel, that goes in and out, it's the wreck, it has teeth on both sides, and as this rack, teeth rack, goes in and out by means of the actuator in the back, it, ro it turns the pinions, the two pinions, uh, to the sides, so the gripper is opened and closed. It's a very simple process. The actuator can be digitally controlled, either pushed or pulled, or again, can be motor controlled to have these grippers, gripper hands um, closing analog, analogly. The actuator itself is, a, is an axle by itself that is attached either to a motor or to a piston. If the piston push the actuator, then the rack will go forward, the grippers will go, will get close, will get closer or open. It depends if it's positive, positive mechanism or negative mechanism. The actor can be a motor that will rotate a lead screw. That lead screw will push this uh, rack outside and pull it inside, going in and out in an analog fashion. So, in case of a motor-driven system, the actuator is being pushed by a lead screw or a nut which is a lead screw that the motor rotates and the nut moves on the lead screw and the nut actually pushes or pulled, uh, pull, pulls the actuator. Vacuum grippers. <clears throat> we saw this picture before but let's look at three different uh, uh, interesting pictures about a head on the, top, on the bottom right. It has several in circular fashion, several um, vacuum cups. The picture in the, in the center is a typical picture of a vacuum cup. And here is the robot as itself getting all vacuums, of, for getting vacuums for all the set of caps, creating vacuum, lifting the object up, pick and place. It's, it's basically for manufacturing. It has um, uh, it's basically very flexible. However, there are some problems with it. Vacuum grippers are problematic in a, in, a, in a way that limits their type of applications. They can leave marks on, the, on some surfaces because of the high pressured, vacuum pressure between the cup and the body. When we release it, sometimes we see a mark, especially on a very sensitive uh, object. It compliant, so the, the reliability is decreased. For each a, a object to be picked and placed, we need to design a cup, a vacuum cap. So there is a custom design of a gripper per the object that we want to move. And obviously, there is a problem with compressed air. Compressed air is not necessarily all the time a fixed, has a fixed value. The value sometimes different. So the vacuum force is sometimes different. And in specific, specifically talking about lifting heavy type of objects, 
releasing or lowering the level of the vacuum might actually uh, cause the entire body to fall down, damage, etc., etc. So there's, there's some problems taking place in the vacuum gripping. However, they are very good in manufacturing for pick and place, basically doing only this particular job. And here are examples of vacuum grippers. We see on the picture on the left a robot lifting a barrel of paint from a conveyor line. Again, picking it up and place it, let's say for packaging, place it in some kind of a carton, box. It cannot, it, this particular movement should be relatively speaking slow movement. Because if I have a fast movement uh, operation in a vacuum clean, uh, gripper, it means that because of the inertia and the center of gravity of the, of the barrel of paint and its weight, when we stop at the place location, it might, might want to continue and then the vacuum will disappear and the barrel will fall down. So there is an acceleration, easy soft acceleration, graduate acceleration of the speed going to a fixed velocity and deaccelerate gradually to the place position. Might slow the process just because we have a vacuum giver and just because we don't want any vibrations, vibrations will basically kill the vacuum and the barrel will fall down. So it's to lift heavy things, but in a very, very gradual fashion. Slowly, gradually accelerate, having fixed velocity and deaccelerate and have a soft landing on the place position. The picture on the top right, we see a person um, uh, looking at a robot having vacuum uh, gripper holding a heavy um, thing and again only for pick and place process. The picture on the left uh, on the right uh, bottom corner is uh, a person holding uh, teaching arms of a robot. We'll talk about teaching arms in a couple of moments and moving this huge heavy board using these vacuum grippers from pick point to place point. Another type of, another family of applications of vacuum grippers is for uneven shaped parts, but they're different ones. It's not these vacuum caps you, uh, by means of uh, a polyester or the polypropylene vacuum caps. Here we're talking about a soft, spongy material. And the process goes like this. Look at the picture in the center. It has a four-step process. A gripper goes down together with the softy material. And it goes down and there is no any vacuum. It goes down on that object, the second one on the right, the second one from the left, I'm sorry. And it actually puts the object within it because it's very softy. Then the object gets hidden inside. Once it is hidden inside, a vacuum begins, begins to take place. But when a vacuum begins to take place, it basically holds that particular object inside the softy, spongy material. Once it is held inside, then, as long as there's vacuum, we can lift it and doing pick and place operation. Uneven shapes, the, the pictures, the, the three pictures on the top right of the slide, we see a rectangular ones, we see some cylindrical ones, we see ball shapes. So these sponges can, can actually hide that object within them and it will be held there because a vacuum will actually put them inside very tightly. The pictures on the left hand side, different shapes, and especially the, we can see it in picture B and picture C, when we want to lift a cylindrical type of, uh, of body, it has its sponge, but inside the sponge, there is a kind of a propeller in the diameter, in a, a curve, to, to, to be, uh, which is adapted 
to the diameter of the cylinder to be picked up. And then not only that this adapter holds this cylinder in place, the sponge actually hug, give a big hug in, to the cylinder, pick it up and place it somewhere else. Pneumatic grippers. Same idea as hydraulic, but only for a small light weight and force. They can easily be incorporated into tight work cells. Small rob robots, very small uh, available workspace. So we need to have a low level um, uh, air pressures and small pneumatic grippers to do the work. And there are different type of uh, grippers that we can see here in the pictures, all of which, the second one from the right, for example, the input air coming from the right, and when the air is being pressed to the um, input, the blue input, then the two grips actually closes. That's what he called positive gripper, the positive mechanism. And we have uh, a negative mechanism on the, the sample gripper on the left of the picture. Putting an air in will open it. That's because of the type of mechanism of the gripper itself. Now, these grippers have a very good ratio of gripping force to weight. Meaning that we don't have to, um, to um, uh, uh, apply high level of gripping force in order to lift the desired weight. That proportion, meaning that these pneumatic grippers are very cost effective. They are small, the robots are small, the working envelope is small, and the amount of air, meaning the air, the compressor, the air compressor is small. We need a small force in order to be able to lift heavier things. Hydraulic grippers, they provide the most strength. They basically, for the significant amount of force has to be applied. And we can see the, the diagram in the center that uh, rela is related to the diameter of the, of the piston itself and the ratio of the forces for that particular piston and how to multiply and amplify the force in hydraulic grippers. The picture on the right, we see a piston that we compressed, we pressed oil in very high pressure in order to close the grippers. More pressure, more closure. That's positive mechanism, the picture on the right. The two examples of uh, hydraulic grippers are on the left. Again, input oil goes in one particular nozzle and output oil goes another one. In other words, we have oil coming in and releasing the oil where we want to open the gripper. Again, positive mechanism gripper, but we have two, one input and one output. Releasing that output causes the oil to go out and the gripper will be opened. Servo electric gripper. This is the analog gripper we talked before. And not only for the gripper themselves, it's for servo electric motor driven robot. Robots are driven by uh, electric motors. We will see it later on in the seminar. First of all, they are easy to control. The reason they're easy to control because we have a motor. The motor is uh, operating, is being activated when from a reference point rotating and we know how much it rotates based on the optical encoder that we have to give us a feedback sense of the amount of the rotations, the amount of the degrees. And it goes this way. It goes that we have, a, uh, we have the controller. We have a control unit to control it. Number one is user input command. Please keep in mind, teaching the motor from external commands using control unit that's number one and then number two we give a command to the gripper controller number three is basically activating the electrical motor going together with a position sensor rotating the shaft number three 
rotating the gearbox and opening and closing in a very analog fashion the grippers themselves. So, and the same thing, can, we can activate the other motors of the robot on the left and uh, left bottom corner. So, number one, this is external uh, teaching, external programming using a control unit. Number two, we control the, we go to a gripper controller, which provides energy to the electrical motor, which being sensed by the positional sensor, the package of motor and sensor, the, the encoder, rotates the mechanical gear, opening and closing the gripper. And here are examples of servo electrical uh, electric grippers. We have the one in the middle, a motor is on the top, electric cable, electric cord is coming, rotating the motor, opening and closing the gear, the palm with five fingers is on the left. Remember, we have wires for each part, each de degree of freedom in that hand. And all these wires are being um, pulled by servo electric uh, motors. Same idea, the picture on the right, Ele electrically we rotate a motor, a motor rotates a gear, and the gripper open and close by the position of the two teeth wheels one to each other.